RN Permetric Exam Collection. Questions 41 to 60. Part 3. 41. A client receiving parenteral nutrition, PN, suddenly spikes a fever. A nurse notifies the physician, and the physician initially prescribes that the solution and tubing be changed. The nurse should do which of the following with the discontinued materials? 1. Discard them in the unit trash. 2. Return them to the hospital pharmacy. 3. Send them to the laboratory for culture. 4. Save them for return to the manufacturer. The answer is 3. Send them to the laboratory for culture. Rationale When the client who is receiving PN spikes a temperature, a catheter related infection should be suspected. The solution and tubing should be changed, and the discontinued materials should be cultured for infectious organisms. The other options are incorrect. Because culture for infectious organisms is necessary, the discontinued materials are not discarded or returned to the pharmacy or manufacturer. 42. A client has been discharged to home on parenteral nutrition, PN. With each visit, a home care nurse assesses which of the following parameters most closely in monitoring this therapy. 1. Pulse and weight. 2. Temperature and weight. 3. Pulse and blood pressure. 4. Temperature and blood pressure. The answer is 2. Temperature and weight. Rationale The client receiving PN at home should have her or his temperature monitored as a means of detecting infection, which is a potential complication of this therapy. An infection also could result in sepsis because the catheter is in a blood vessel. The client's weight is monitored as a measure of the effectiveness of this nutritional therapy and to detect hypervolemia. The pulse and blood pressure are important parameters to assess, but they do not relate specifically to the effects of PN. 43. A nurse is caring for a group of adult clients on an acute care medical surgical nursing unit. The nurse understands that which of the following clients would be the least likely candidate for parenteral nutrition, PN? 1. A 66-year-old client with extensive burns. 2. A 42-year-old client who has had an open cholecystectomy. 3. A 27-year-old client with severe exacerbation of Crohn's disease. 4. A 35-year-old client with persistent nausea and vomiting from chemotherapy. The answer is 2. A 42-year-old client who has had an open cholecystectomy. Rationale, parenteral nutrition is indicated in clients whose gastrointestinal tracts are not functional or who cannot take in a diet enterally for extended periods. Examples of these conditions include those of the clients identified in options 1, 3, and 4. Other clients would be those who have had extensive surgery, have multiple fractures, are septic, or have advanced cancer or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The client with the open cholecystectomy is not a candidate because this client would resume a regular diet within a few days following surgery. 44. A nurse is preparing to hang the first bag of parenteral nutrition, PN, solution via the central line of an assigned client. The nurse obtains which most essential piece of equipment before hanging the solution? 1. Urine test strips. 2. Blood glucose meter. 3. Electronic infusion pump. 4. Non-invasive blood pressure monitor. The answer is 3. Electronic infusion pump. Rationale, the nurse obtains an electronic infusion pump before hanging a PN solution. Because of the high glucose content, use of an infusion pump is necessary to ensure that the solution does not infuse too rapidly or fall behind. Because the client's blood glucose level is monitored every 4 to 6 hours during administration of PN, a blood glucose meter also will be needed, but this is not the most essential item needed before hanging the solution. Urine test strips, to measure glucose, rarely are used because of the advent of blood glucose monitoring. Although the blood pressure will be monitored, a non-invasive blood pressure monitor is not the most essential piece of equipment needed for this procedure. 45. A nurse is making initial rounds at the beginning of the shift and notes that the parenteral nutrition, PN, bag of an assigned client is empty. 
Which of the following solutions readily available on the nursing unit should the nurse hang until another PN solution is mixed and delivered to the nursing unit? 1. 5% dextrose in water. 2. 10% dextrose in water. 3. 5% dextrose in ringer's lactate. 4. 5% dextrose in 0.9% sodium chloride. The answer is 2. 10% dextrose in water. Rationale, the client is at risk for hypoglycemia, therefore the solution containing the highest amount of glucose should be hung until the new PN solution becomes available. Because PN solutions contain high glucose concentrations, the 10% dextrose in water solution is the best of the choices presented. The solution selected should be one that minimizes the risk of hypoglycemia. Options 1, 3, and 4 will not be as effective in minimizing the risk of hypoglycemia. 46. A nurse is monitoring the status of a client's fat emulsion, lipid, infusion and notes that the infusion is one hour behind. Which of the following actions by the nurse is appropriate? 1. Adjust the infusion rate to catch up over the next hour. 2. Increase the infusion rate to catch up over the next two hours. 3. Ensure that the fat emulsion infusion rate is infusing at the prescribed rate. 4. Adjust the infusion rate to run wide open until the solution is back on time. The answer is 3. Ensure that the fat emulsion infusion rate is infusing at the prescribed rate. Rationale, the nurse should not increase the rate of a fat emulsion to make up the difference if the infusion timing falls behind. Doing so could place the client at risk for fat overload. Additionally, increasing the rate suddenly can cause fluid overload. The same principle, not increasing the rate, applies to PN or any intravenous, 4, infusion. Therefore, options 1, 2, and 4 are incorrect. 47. A client receiving parenteral nutrition, PN, in the home setting has a weight gain of 5 pounds in one week. The nurse next assesses the client to detect the presence of which of the following? 1. Thirst. 2. Polyuria. 3. Decreased blood pressure. 4. Crackles on auscultation of the lungs. The answer is 4. Crackles on auscultation of the lungs. Rationale, optimal weight gain when the client is receiving PN is 1 to 2 pounds per week. The client who has a weight gain of 5 pounds per week while receiving PN is likely to have fluid retention. This can result in hypervolemia. Signs of hypervolemia include increased blood pressure, crackles on lung auscultation, a bounding pulse, jugular vein distension, headache, and weight gain more than desired. Options 1 and 2 are associated with hyperglycemia. Option 3 is likely to be noted in deficient fluid volume. 48. A nurse is caring for a restless client who is beginning nutritional therapy with parenteral nutrition, PN. The nurse should plan to ensure that which of the following is done to prevent the client from injury? 1. Calculate daily intake and output. 2. Monitor the temperature once daily. 3. Secure all connections in the PN system. 4. Monitor blood glucose levels every 12 hours. The answer is 3. Secure all connections in the PN system. Rationale, the nurse should plan to secure all connections in the tubing. Tape is used per agency protocol. This helps prevent the restless client from pulling the connections apart accidentally. The nurse should also monitor intake and output, but this does not relate specifically to a risk for injury as presented in the question. Also, options 2 and 4 do not relate to a risk for injury as presented in the question. In addition, the client's temperature and blood glucose levels are monitored more frequently than the timeframes identified in the options to detect signs of infection and hyperglycemia, respectively. 49. A client had a 1,000 ml bag of 5% dextrose in 0.9% sodium chloride hung at 3 p.m. The nurse making rounds at 3.45 p.m. finds that the client is complaining of a pounding headache and is dyspneic, is experiencing chills, and is apprehensive, with an increased pulse rate. The intravenous, 4, bag has 400 milliliters remaining. 
the nurse should take which action first? 1. Call the physician. 2. Slow the four infusion. 3. Sit the client up in bed. 4. Remove the four catheter. The answer is 2. Slow the four infusion. Rationale, the client's symptoms are compatible with circulatory overload. This may be verified by noting that 600 milliliters has infused in the course of 45 minutes. The first action of the nurse is to slow the infusion. Other actions may follow in rapid sequence. The nurse may elevate the head of the bed to aid the client's breathing, if necessary. The nurse also notifies the physician. The fore catheter is not removed, it may be needed once the complication has been resolved. 50. The nurse has a prescription to hang an intravenous 4 bag of 1,000 ml 5% dextrose in water with 20 ml equivalent potassium chloride. The nurse should plan to do which of the following immediately after injecting the potassium chloride into the port of the 4 bag. 1. Rotate the bag gently. 2. Attach the tubing to the client. 3. Prime the tubing with the 4 solution. 4. Check the solution for yellowish discoloration. The answer is 1. Rotate the bag gently. Rationale, after adding a medication to a bag of 4 solution, the nurse should agitate or rotate the bag gently to mix the medication evenly in the solution. The nurse should then attach a completed medication label. The nurse can then prime the tubing. The four solution should have been checked for discoloration before the medication was added to the solution. The tubing is attached to the client last. 51. A client with the recent diagnosis of myocardial infarction and impaired renal. Function is recuperating on the step-down cardiac unit. The client's blood pressure has been borderline low and intravenous, 4, fluids have been infusing at 100 milliliters per hour via a central line catheter in the right internal jugular for approximately 24 hours to increase renal output and maintain the blood pressure. Upon entering the client's room, the nurse notes that the client is breathing rapidly and is coughing. The nurse Determines that the client is most likely experiencing which complication of four. Therapy. 1. Hematoma. 2. Air embolism. 3. Systemic infection. 4. Circulatory overload. The answer is 4. Circulatory overload. Rationale. Circulatory, fluid, overload is a complication of intravenous therapy. Signs include rapid breathing, dyspnea, a moist cough, and crackles. When circulatory overload is present, the client's blood pressure also increases. Hematoma is characterized by ecchymosis, swelling, and leakage at the fore insertion site, as well as hard and painful lumps at the site. Air embolism is characterized by tachycardia, dyspnea, hypotension, cyanosis, and decreased level of consciousness. Systemic infection is characterized by chills, fever, malaise, headache, nausea, vomiting, backache, and tachycardia. 52. The nurse is preparing a continuous intravenous, 4, infusion at the medication cart. As the nurse goes to attach the distal end of the 4 tubing to a needleless device, the exposed tubing drops and hits the top of the medication cart. Which of the following is the appropriate action by the nurse? 1. Obtain new 4 tubing. 2. Attach a new needleless device. 3. Wipe the distal end of the tubing with betadine. 4. Scrub the needleless device with an alcohol swab. The answer is 1. Obtain new 4 tubing. Rationale The nurse should obtain a new 4 tubing because contamination has occurred and could cause systemic infection to the client. Wiping with betadine is insufficient and is contraindicated because the tubing will be attached directly to a catheter in the client's vein. The needleless device has not been contaminated and does not need replacement or cleaning. 53. A physician has written a prescription to discontinue an intravenous, 4, line. 
The nurse obtains which of the following supplies from the unit supply area for applying pressure to the site after removing the four catheter. 1. Elastic wrap. 2. Betadine swab. 3. Adhesive bandage. 4. Sterile 2 2 gauze. The answer is 4. Sterile 2 underscore 2 gauze. Rationale. A dry sterile dressing such as a sterile 2 underscore 2 is used to apply pressure to the discontinued foresight. This material is absorbent, sterile, and non-irritating. A betadine swab would irritate the opened puncture site and would not stop the blood flow. An adhesive bandage or elastic wrap may be used to cover the site once hemostasis has occurred. 54. A client has just undergone insertion of a central venous catheter at the bedside. The nurse would be sure to check the results of which of the following before initiating the flow rate of the client's intravenous, 4. Solution at 100 ml per hour. 1. Serum osmolalony. 2. Serum electrolyte levels. 3. Portable chest X-ray film. 4. Intake and output record. The answer is 3. Portable chest X-ray film. Rationale. Before beginning administration of 4 solution, the nurse should assess whether the chest radiograph reveals that the central catheter is in the proper place. This is necessary to prevent infusion of 4 fluid into pulmonary or subcutaneous tissues. The other options represent items that are useful for the nurse to be aware of in the general care of this client, but they do not relate to this procedure. 55. A client involved in a motor vehicle crash presents to the emergency department with severe internal bleeding. The client is severely hypotensive and unresponsive. The nurse anticipates that which intravenous, 4, solution will most likely be prescribed to increase intravascular volume, replace immediate blood loss volume, and increase blood pressure? 1. 5% dextrose in lactated ringers. 2. 0.33% sodium chloride, one-third normal saline. 3. 0.225% sodium chloride, one-quarter normal saline. 4. 0.45% sodium chloride, one-half normal saline. The answer is 1. 5% dextrose in lactated ringers. Rationale. The goal of therapy with this client is to expand intravascular volume as quickly as possible. The 5% dextrose in lactated ringers, hypertonic solution, would increase intravascular volume and immediately replace lost fluid volume until a transfusion could be administered, resulting in an increase in the client's blood pressure. The solutions in options 2, 3, and 4 would not be given to this client because they are hypotonic solutions and, instead of increasing intravascular space, the solutions would move into the cells via osmosis. 56. The nurse provides a list of instructions to a client being discharged to home with a peripherally inserted central catheter, PICC. The nurse determines that the client needs further instructions if the client made which statement. 1. I need to wear a medic alert tag or bracelet. 2. I need to have a repair kit available in the home for use if needed. 3. I need to keep the insertion site protected when in the shower or bath. 4. I need to keep my activity level to a minimum while this catheter is in place. The answer is 4. I need to keep my activity level to a minimum while this catheter is in place. Rationale The client should be taught that only minor activity restrictions apply with this type of catheter. The client should protect the site during bathing and should carry or wear a medic alert identification. The client should have a repair kit in the home for use as needed because the catheter is for long-term use. 57. Packed red blood cells have been prescribed for a client with low hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. The nurse takes the client's temperature before hanging the blood transfusion and records 100.6 underscore F orally. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? 1. Begin the transfusion as prescribed. 2. Delay hanging the blood and notify the physician. 3. Administer an antihistamine and begin the transfusion. 4. Administer two tablets of acetaminophen, Tylenol, and begin the transfusion. The answer is 2. Delay hanging the blood and notify the physician.
Rationale, if the client has a temperature higher than 100 underscore F, the unit of blood should not be hung until the physician is notified and has the opportunity to give further prescriptions. The physician likely will prescribe that the blood be administered regardless of the temperature, but the decision is not within the nurse's scope of practice to make. The nurse needs a physician's prescription to administer medications to the client. 58. The nurse has received a prescription to transfuse a client with a unit of packed red blood cells. Before explaining the procedure to the client, the nurse asks which initial question? 1. Have you ever had a transfusion before? 2. Why do you think that you need the transfusion? 3. Have you ever gone into shock for any reason in the past? 4. Do you know the complications and risks of a transfusion? The answer is 1. Have you ever had a transfusion before? Rationale, asking the client about personal experience with transfusion therapy provides a good starting point for client teaching about this procedure. Options 3 and 4 are not helpful because they may elicit a fearful response from the client. Although determining whether the client knows the reason for the transfusion is important, option 2 is not an appropriate statement in terms of eliciting information from the client regarding an understanding of the need for the transfusion. 59. A client receiving a transfusion of packed red blood cells, PRBCs, begins to vomit. The client's blood pressure is 90 50th millimeter of mercury from a baseline of 125-78 mmHg. The client's temperature is 100.8 F orally from a baseline of 99.2 F orally. The nurse determines that the client may be experiencing which complication of a blood transfusion? 1. Septicemia 2. Hyperkalemia 3. Circulatory overload 4. Delayed transfusion reaction The answer is 1. Septicemia Rationale, septicemia occurs with the transfusion of blood contaminated with microorganisms. Signs include chills, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, hypotension, and the development of shock. Hyperkalemia causes weakness, paresthesia, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, and dysrhythmias. Circulatory overload causes cough, dyspnea, chest pain, wheezing, tachycardia, and hypertension. A delayed transfusion reaction can occur days to years after a transfusion. Signs include fever, mild jaundice, and a decreased hematocrit level. 60. The nurse determines that a client is having a transfusion reaction. After the nurse stops the transfusion, which action should immediately be taken next? 1. Remove the intravenous, 4. Line. 2. Run a solution of 5% dextrose in water. 3. Run normal saline at a keep vein open rate. 4. Obtain a culture of the tip of the catheter device removed from the client. The answer is 3. Run normal saline at a keep vein open rate. Rationale, if the nurse suspects a transfusion reaction, the nurse stops the transfusion and infuses normal saline at a keep vein open rate pending further physician prescriptions. This maintains a patent for access line and aids in maintaining the client's intravascular volume. The nurse would not remove the four line because then there would be no four access route. Obtaining a culture of the tip of the catheter device removed from the client is incorrect. First, the catheter should not be removed. Second, cultures are performed when infection, not transfusion reaction, is suspected. Normal saline is the solution of choice over solutions containing dextrose because saline does not cause red blood cells to clump.